BB851, turn right, heading 180. Travis, what an absolute pleasure to have you on today. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm thoroughly excited to more about Avalo. While these can be labelled as interviews, I think what I love to do with them is also make them into a chat and discussion, not just learning more about the company, but learning more about the story that you have to tell in, in your role. Um, and before we get underway, obviously I've heard a lot about you and know a lot about you, but would you like to introduce yourself to summarise that to people that may not be as familiar? Sure. Uh, I'm Travis Critz. I am head of marketing for Avello Airlines, uh, the new US ultra low cost carrier. Uh, operating with bases at Burbank, New Haven, Orlando. And as of today, we just announced that we will have a new base uh, at Fort Myers, Florida. Fantastic. And looking at some of your previous roles, you've certainly been around the industry um, from the VP of Marketing Sales Distribution at US Airways for some 13 years to also the interim uh, Chief Commercial Officer at Silver Airways for a year. Tell me a little bit about how each role shaped you into who you are today, and did you say take tips from each position to put them into your role today? Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, let me give you a, a background of what led to sh to shaping all those things, and I direct this really at the younger people in your audience that are listening to this, um, because I can kind of put myself in their shoes uh, a little bit as I as I look back at the beginning of my airline career, because I was very interested in airlines when I was a kid. Uh, I, I didn't come to the industry late. I came to the industry when I was 18, uh, right out of college, which you know some people do, and there's some stories about that. And um, and so my story about getting here is a bit of serendipity along the way. And I and I tell this to young people because I think there's uh, and I tell this to my kids' friends who are you know in their late teen years and their early 20s, because uh, you know things things can happen for you even when you're not sure where you want to go. But I've got an interest in this industry. If they're listening to this you know, right here watching this on YouTube, they've got an interest in this industry and they may not, you know, know what it looks like, uh, you know, to kind of, to get somewhere. So it has been a bit of, uh, you know, serendipity. I mean, briefly, I got started, it was a different time, but I got started by walking through the airport terminals at Phoenix Sky Harbor, asking for uh, job applications when I was 18 uh, and going to college because I wanted to work for an airline and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, kind of ironically, at the U.S. Airways ticket counter, the older gentleman, when I asked him that, said, oh, you want an application for where? McDonald's? Because, you know, I, I looked pretty young at the time. And um, ironically, I did become vice president of marketing at, at U.S. Airways, so I, I took a little bit of I did I never ran that guy down, but I probably should have. <laughs> uh, so that, that was kind of fun. But, um, you know, that that's, that's really how I got started. And so I spent, you know, time lapse of my career is ramp, for American in Phoenix, uh, ticket counter for American at DCA, uh, network planning and government affairs at Continental, then to Phoenix with America West, uh, and US Airways, network sales, vacations, e-commerce, um, you know, all of those things. And then staying within the industry at Travelport, uh, Global Eagle, Wi-Fi on the plane, uh, as you mentioned, um, interim uh, chief commercial officer at the Pink Pony, uh, Silver Airways. And, uh, and then, you know, some time in aviation consulting, which has all kind of led me ultimately, uh, you know, here to Avello, um, which uh, you know, goes back to a lot of the relationships uh, that were formed over all of those years, which are so critically important. Uh, you know, the people that you work with, you're going to see over and over again. Uh, Andrew Levy uh, was, was one of those guys. So I, I, I did some things with him when he was at Allegiant. He was one of the uh, co-founders uh, of Allegiant, and then uh, worked with him again when he was CFO at United. And uh, you know, keeping those relationships, you know, today more important than ever because you know people obviously are connected so well and for so long. Uh, but but all of those things kind of uh, you know came together to to to, to lead me to, to this position today. I think it's so important, and I'm so happy that you did touch on for the younger people that may be coming through and, and want to either follow a similar path of you or just generally enter into the aviation industry. I've been out of um, the Australian version of, I guess you could say, college, and it's our high school for now, four years. But one thing I can definitely say throughout my period is aviation was frowned upon very, very heavily as a career path for me and saying that I liked planes or maybe I wanted to work at the airport. You got no support from the education system. Because th there's no chance that you're going to be learning about planes in one of your classes. It's very, very rare. Um, so there's a lot of people that probably feel 
that similar thing. They'd love to enter into the aviation industry, but they just don't know how. And I think that's the brilliant thing about speaking with someone like you is you can give them pointers or be able to just tell your own story. And like you said, if maybe someone's listening and wants to follow a similar path, they can maybe adopt a key strategy of yours and and, and try and do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's right. And, um, you know, I I faced kind of the same kind of challenges even, you know, back then that, um, you know, aviation didn't get as much focus and, and, and people like us, Think, well how can that be it's such an amazing business and there's so much that goes on how can this not be you know the focus of a lot of people but it turns out it's not but you have to use that to your advantage uh you know you got to zig when people are zagging you know we all know you know try to do things maybe you know a little bit you know counter mainstream uh you know might might you know you know lead to some great things and sometimes you wonder well what does that really mean for me well this is a you know a really good example um, you know, and if it's, if it's that, you know, that you want to work in, you know, when I, when I wanted to work, I knew I wanted to work in airline management, you know, when I was 18, I didn't know what that meant. Um, but you know, I didn't, re- being a pilot wasn't, you know, m- wasn't what I was interested in. Um, but you know, we didn't have the tools that you have today either, you know, obviously you can go online and, and learn about so many different things and contact people directly, but whether it's, uh, you know, management or, op- you know, airport operations or being a pilot or, or flight attendant or anything like that. Um, you know, it is certainly, uh, you know, an amazing time, uh, you know, to do those things. And, uh, you know, you, you've got to, you know, kind of screw up your courage a little bit. And, you know, I had to walk the, the airport, uh, you know, to get those job applications. And, you know, you got to do some similar things to kind of stick your neck out. But it can certainly happen. It's a different pathway to, like we were sort of discussing about the education system, a different pathway to maybe the way they'd encourage, but it also can be a very rewarding one. And like you said, while it's sort of off the beaten track, it's huge in its own way. The amount of roles that we would not not have even heard of when we're younger and we've had our eyes open to, there are so many different areas. I mean, I've just chatted with people about how there's teams that go into designing the bath bags at the back of, there's, there's so many areas that you just genuinely um, would not think of. And and sticking with that and believing in the aviation industry and believing in a company, what led you to join the team today that, that you're in? Was there a key talking point that maybe led you to it? Um, because I think personally believing in the company you work for is always very important and believing in the goals and the mission. So was there something for you that stood out? Sure. I mean, you know, the there's a few different really important components, but it, it, it always does end up coming back to the people. And Andrew Levy, you know, was, was number one here. I mean, he put this whole thing together himself, which is, an, you know, putting an airline together is an unbelievable feat. But putting one together that has a genuinely solid business plan with a high probability of success is very rare as we all know, in any country, there's not many cases, there's lots of failures, there's, there's little success. Uh, But, you know, for, for, for myself and my colleagues here who joined Andrew, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty experienced in the industry. So we've got, we got a pretty good fix on, on what makes sense and what's kind of fantasy. And, uh, you know, this business plan uh, is informed by, by his experiences which you, you just kind of trace back to what he's done you know, in his career from ValueJet, which ultimately became AirTran, which was a, a novel concept at the time, but you know, ultimately you know, very successful. Allegiant, uh, you know, the most improbable success story. For those of us at Legacy Airlines, when Allegiant got started, you know, we kind of, you know, it had never, it was so novel. We, we kind of smirked at it and said, you know, they're flying just a few days a week to you know, these small places. Uh, you know, the, the, this is kind of silly. And, you know, sure enough, a few years later, uh, you know, it became the most profitable airline in America. And, you know, it, it probably still is to this day. So an amazing business there. So, um, you know, we, we, we certainly believed in uh, the, the, the plan that, that is presented and that we're executing on, um, informed by both Andrew himself and the credibility that he brings and, uh, you know, the background of, 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 of components of that business plan that have proven themselves. So, you know, some of the bits, you know, that I talked about Allegiant, you know, here, you know, the plan is, uh, you know, low fares generally to small convenient airports. Really, there's a small convenient airport um, on one end or, or, or both ends of, of, of everywhere that we fly uh, you know, and delivering that service in a friendly, positive way. So not trying to be a, a kind of a gotcha kind of a situation 
Um, and so we all believe strongly um, in that niche. So um, you know, th th that, that in of itself, in terms of the business plan, uh, very attractive, I think, to all of us. And then for me personally, uh, you know, being able to, to kind of deliver on, uh, you know, all of these experiences that I've had, um, whether it, you know, and, and, and everything I've done in my background uh, informs what I do, you know, today. My network planning background, e-commerce, you know, running the website here, uh, you know, all of the consumer marketing and awareness marketing that we do, distribution and how we sell our tickets. Um, but, you know, I, I will say again to the younger people, it, it still goes back you know, to the very earliest days, it all informs and builds up. It's the 10,000 hour rule is, is very real. Um, you know, I, my experience pushing planes and dumping labs and cleaning seat pockets and issuing tickets at the ticket counter and getting yelled at by customers um, informs me all the time in what I do. I've got, I've got uh, you know, strong empathy and understanding for our crew members and what they're doing, and and I and I have a good sense of the ideas that that come out of the marketing group. Um, you know what's realistic and what's not, and so 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 that it all kind of you know comes together. Um, and it, you know you get on that on that track. And I will say that again for the younger people, diversifying what you do in the industry is can be very helpful. Some people specialize in the same thing the whole time. That that can be fine, but uh, it's also uh, depending on where you want to go, moving around is not always the easiest thing to do because you're comfortable in what you're doing. I was very comfortable in network planning. It's a great job, great, super interesting, a lot, you know, a, just great group of people. Um, but, you know, it was it was time to try something different, to diversify, and then do that, you know, over and over again was really helpful. Sometimes taking a risk in life, whatever it may be, like you said, whether it's going to different roles, whether at the end of the day is taking that risk and maybe if you're younger, doing something out of the ordinary and moving to the aviation industry when people may be saying, no, go and do this. Um, it can be very valuable. And I think probably, I'm not too sure if this was for your case, but like we said, there's, there's so many different roles and being able to try out all the different things that the aviation world has to offer. Not only are you gaining experience, but you're also determining, I guess, simply just what you enjoy, maybe what you're not so fond of. And then as you progress in your career, get to older age, you're really able to understand and mature from that, from those yeah, like, yeah. It's just together. Yep. All that, all that kind of, you know, falls into place. Um, but, but I, I agree with you on, on the risk taking, uh, you, you've got it, you've got to take some jumps, you know, you want them to be, you know, informed and, and, and educated. Uh, but you, the people that don't take any risk, uh, and stay safe, they stay in the same place, they don't move and that can be fine. Uh, but oftentimes, you know, if you, if you, um, are ambitious, you're going to have to jump and jump sooner rather than later. Don't wait and wait and wait for everything to be perfect because everything will never be perfect. Exactly. And there's a whole other world out there as well. So I think that's a brilliant, brilliant tip for anyone that may be in that position where they want to make the jump. Um, it's a risk, but it can be very, very rewarding. And in five years time, after you've made that risk and look back, you probably most likely say to yourself, I'm so happy I did. And, right. and you've been talking a little bit about marketing, which of course is in is your role. So the marketing world is, is pretty complex and something I always like to think about is how you can have marketing at a supermarket chain or then at an airline. It's, it's almost everywhere we look and it's such a key fundamental part of the business. So talk to me a little bit about what goes into being the head of marketing at an airline. Sure. Well, like a lot of things in marketing just across the board, it's very different. Uh, in, in different industries and at different companies. So there is, um, it, it, it depends very much on your situation. Um, and, you know, in the case of a, of a big airline, was it US Airways, um, you know, and, and certainly it's somebody like, you know, Delta or United, you've got a big budget, you've got a big team, you're a well-known brand, you're accomplishing your marketing, you know, in, in very different ways than a small airline like a Velo, for example. You know, you're dealing with you know Madison Avenue, m m millions and millions and millions of dollars, you know, funneled you know in, in various areas to accomplish, you know, your tasks. Um, I will tell you, at a startup, um, we are no different than startups in many other industries that we are on a real tight budget, <laughs> and so um, it is uh, a lot of 
making use of our experience. We have a number of people who are former Allegiant people on our marketing team. And what it what it absolutely comes down to, whether it's the big company like Delta or whether it's you know the marketing team that I'll talk about right here, once again, as I started at the top, it's about the people. It really is about how it's it's a bit of a cliche, but having the best team, the best individuals makes all the difference in, in every case, in every stop I've made along the way, uh, you know, the better the people you're working with, um, you know, the better the outcome is going to be. The best example, and I'll, I digress a little bit, the best example of that is the time that I spent at Continental in the early 90s. And, uh, you know, younger people, you know, again, are like, Continental, I kind of barely sort of remember that maybe. But, you know, the Gordon Bethune book, uh, Worst First, is, is great. But you look at the individuals that were there at Continental in the early 90s, and it is an all-star team of what the airline industry became. And that was not, you know, it's not an accident. Uh, you know, Gordon in particular, you know, made, uh, you know, a big effort to do that. But uh, a lot of those people were there already too, but a lot of the right people all just came together. I mean, I can just, you know, uh, I mean, it was Gordon, it was Greg Brenneman, it was Andrew Nacella, Scott Kirby, Glenn Howenstein, Dave Siegel, Mark Bergstrud, Ben Baldanza, Zane Rowe, um, Mark Drush. I mean, that was just... That was just a continental. Um, those those individuals who became, you know, who, who turned the U.S. aviation industry into what it is, um, you know, in many ways. And I'm leaving I'm, I'm leaving a lot of people out. Um, it was it was really epic. So on a much smaller scale, you look at marketing here, and you know we've got a pretty small team. Um, many of them are have a legion experience, um, and uh, we're we the, we are we have to do a lot of improv. Um, you know, we have we, you know. Our primary goal is to create awareness for Avello. Uh, you know, most people have not heard of us, uh, so we, you know, we we measure a lot about about whether people in our cities uh, know we exist. Um, so, you know, we have a we have what we think is a really effective um, media mix of traditional and digital tactics that we use uh, partnerships uh, in the cities. We try to be a really good. Um, you know, citizen of the cities that we that we fly to, which is which is great in a lot of cases. Because when you know when you're in Eureka, California, um, or Lansing, Michigan, uh, you know we can kind of punch above our weight in terms of you know how important we are to the community. And air service is such a critical thing for these communities to improve you know their own economic development. Uh, you know that they're they're eager to to work closely with us. So we spend a lot of time on relationships. Uh, you know, in, in those kinds of fields. And then, um, you know, the other big one that this team works on is Aveloair.com. We've just, we're in the middle of launching a new site right now. Uh, it's kind of rolling out in some stages uh, over the coming weeks. Uh, but, you know, when when people come to us and interact with us, the only place you can buy a ticket uh, is on Aveloair.com. And so we need to deliver a great customer experience. So that's a big part of marketing is ensuring that uh, you know, the messaging we're delivering, the functionality that we're delivering, the interaction that people have with us on the site and on our app and on our future apps, uh, you know, that those are within our means are as frictionless, uh, you know, and, and, and great experiences as we can make them. So, um, you know, those are some of the kinds of things that we that, that we kind of work through. And I think something we've we've definitely mentioned many times already in this in this discussion is the people. And I'm not too sure where I heard this or when I heard it, but I know it's always stuck with me. And it was something along the lines of you can have the most experienced person in the world, but if they're terrible to work with, can cause frustrations in the team, it's almost useless. Having though someone that is incredibly passionate is maybe learning learning the trade as well, but loves what they do and is willing to put everything in to build that amazing team can be so beneficial. And I think what you're saying here is like, that really makes the experience what it is. You're all eager. I can already tell from chatting with you, you're passionate about it. You want it to succeed. You want it to do well. And that is so much more important than say someone that may have 60 years experience, hat doesn't really have an interest in the company, doesn't believe right. in it and so forth. Yeah, it's true. Although to be fair, it's kind of a combination because um, the the and I think about the individuals on our team right now, for example, and I could you know go through you know one by one. Um, they that what's so great is not only do they have that passion you're talking about and they love what they do, um, but in fact they are very experienced and they're excellent at what they do. I would put them up against anybody in the industry, um, you know whether it's e-commerce and design or or, you know, graphics um, or, uh, you know, 
um, you know, deploying tactical elements of digital and uh, and 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 traditional media, uh, you know, SEO uh, work and SEM and all the things we do on the digital side. So they are, uh, you know, the, they 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 put in their time, they got their ten thousand hours, they're great at it, and they love it. It's the best of both worlds. <laughs> it's like it's it's almost a rare breed. All the time, they have ideas. All the time, you know, when you're us, you've got to have a lot of novel ideas. You've got ideas. Uh, they participate um it's it's really a lot of fun that's and that's probably the best of both worlds as well like i was sort of saying having that like you said the experience but also the desire to improve to be great at the job to be passionate um and maybe and obviously i've grown up with a dad who's been heavily in logistics and he's had people that can be both he's had people on the spectrum that are brilliant but have no interest in the company he's he'll always come back from work and be like oh it was such a struggle of a day i was trying to get this done or then you can have yeah. someone like he's so passionate he's going off and doing this he's brilliant at his job um a day in the life is something i always love to to ask and for me it's it's always changing and that's that's always quite a good thing um it means you're never doing the same thing so in the best possible way and i know this may be difficult for you given how it could always change and like you mentioned you guys are working on that website at the moment what does a day in the life look like as head of marketing um it is um it it's it's touching a lot of different uh topics i you know i, I can kind of look at my calendar this week and and give you just kind of some rough examples um you know we've got We've got some work uh, on the website and how we're how we're uh, featuring um, hotels and cars in the future. Uh, you know, some some discussion with the teams that are putting those kinds of things together. We've got some other partnerships with third parties um, that we're talking about. Um, we've got our one crew meeting today, which is something that Andrew has been very passionate about. Where every week we get on a call with everybody in the company it can join. It's obviously videoed um, or recorded, but um, but but Andrew does about an hour of updates from some of us on what's going on and then Q&A from anybody. And so when I started here, I don't know, a year or more ago, you know, there were 150 people on the call and which was already the company was already going. Now there's close to 500, I think. And so we do that um, every week. Um, I've got a quick trip, uh, a little day trip uh, somewhere to do uh, a, a meeting with one of our partners. Um, we got we got more website discussions um, about uh, new features and functionality we'd like to put on there. Um, we meet with our um, I meet with our cities that we're uh, cooperating with. Um, I mentioned like Lansing, Michigan, for example. Uh, you know, we talk to those guys um, about some of the work we're doing together uh, to promote awareness of the airport there and of Avello itself. Um, we've we've got a. Uh, a discussion that we uh, a number of us go through um, on uh, how things are going uh, with regard to kind of pricing and results in all of our markets, uh, how markets are performing. Uh, we've got we got a weekly recurrence on that. Um, so yeah, we I, you know run around and hit a lot of topics, and then um, importantly, overarching everything, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I I talk with my team members in the marketing group, um, you know, all day long. I mean, it, it's very different than it was you know, 10 years ago with, uh, you know, in our case, we use teams, um, but, you know, to be able to, to grab anybody and some people, so we got, we've got our headquarters here in Houston, but we've got people distributed around as well um, and be able to get everybody on, you know, all at once kind of um, on a whim uh, is really helpful. And uh, the team's chats, which I think are similar to Slack, uh, you know, those, uh, you know, you know, we've got the whole team commenting all day long on various projects that we're working on and refining and executing, and uh, you know, working for throughput to get our uh, our, our marketing, you know, tactics uh, and elements uh, out in the field. You know, and as the network grows, it gets very challenging. Um, and these are a couple community-driven questions, still about marketing. So I had a couple people that wanted to put forward some questions to you. Um, sure. Advertising and marketing are obviously really, really important in getting a brand out there, further putting it to new communities and new people. You've you've touched on it already and how important it can be for growing a business. Um, and I'm sure as the head of marketing, you've looked at many different ways of implementing, whether it's advertisements, digital age, uh, whether it's local media and so forth. What have you noticed for the brand and company generally to be the most yeah. successful and I guess the one that receives the most attention from people and really captures them? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I will tell you that um, it's the old the old line is true that the most effective marketing uh, is media and PR. Uh, you know that there's no way around that. When we announce cities and we're you know on the front page of the paper in the city, you know we get talked about for a few days. That's incredibly uh, valuable, and it's you know it's kind of free, and um, and that's really amazing. So, but beyond that, you can't you know you can't be on the front page every day. Um, so, um, what, you know, one of the, you know, we, we, we have a, a pretty broad mix of tactics, uh, as I mentioned, digital and, um, uh, and traditional. So we've got a few things that are a little bit of our secret sauce that, uh, that, you know, that we don't really talk about so much that we think are super effective, um, that I'll, that I'll, I'll skip over. But, you know, one thing that we, that we've been, uh, pretty aggressive about that, you know, you can't hide it is, uh, outdoor, which is billboards. And, uh, you know, that, that goes back to is really a throwback to a different era, but you know, the Southwest brand was built on billboards and, you know, I grew up in Phoenix when Southwest was little tiny Southwest flying to, you know, six or eight places. And, uh, and I was, you know, watch them, you know, grow, you know, from a few flights a day at Phoenix to, you know, a really important hub. And they would have billboards like you can't believe. I mean, you would go and I could still recite Albuquerque a go-go, uh, or no, Albuquerque quickly, San Diego a go-go. Um, and they had all these little clever little lines all over the, you know, it eventually came all over the country, but they would buy, you know, multiple billboards around airports and in cities. And that was a lot of brand building for them at the time. And I, you know, they might not even have called it that back then, but, um, you know, it certainly was a different era. But um, we've had uh, what we think is some pretty good success uh, in certain places uh, with a fair amount of outdoor. And then, um, so, you know, so we do that. So we think that's valuable. Um, and then, uh, you know, on the, and then there's some other traditional tactics, but, you know, on the digital side, it's a lot of what you'd expect, um, you know, social, uh, you know, display ads, you know, kind of okay, uh, SEO, you know, general keyword work uh, that is, um, I will say, more challenging than people want to admit. Um, though, and I've, I've done those, I've done a lot of that digital advertising you know, for a number of years at, 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 at many companies, have been, and it's the same challenges. There is a lot of voodoo in there. And not everybody wants to admit that. They say, "Oh, I'm going to do these keyword ads, and I'm going to get Ahrefs, and I'm going to get, uh, you know, um, you know, the the various, uh, you know, platforms that are going to help me, you know, optimize, you know, how what I'm doing, brand, non-brand, um, you know, keyword, you know, you know, work into my into my site, you know, tied to my SEO, and uh, it's all important stuff, and it's very valuable, but." It's a it's a way to have a lot of money go flying out the window and not be really sure, you know, 100 percent sure what's really going on. And uh, and people say they have 100 percent clarity on really what's going on. Uh, usually that's not really true. So um, I think we're honest with ourselves about that. We're very careful about it, but it's an important part of what we do. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of different angles to it. That's that's something I know from SEO and all of that. You can think you have a, a firm understanding, but it can be so random at the same point and trying to juggle that. And like you said, a bit of voodoo in there. You think, oh, I've, I've got this down pat. Well, maybe I don't five days later. It changes. It's a nightmare. You know, there's a reason that Google <laughs> makes all this money. It's just like the reason the casino is so beautiful. You know, we all know. So, um, yeah, so it's a challenge. It's very valuable, but you've got to you know, keep a very close eye on it and be very, very careful. Well, that's the thing. It's always changing as well. And, and trying to keep up with that is companies, big companies will lose control because they got a lot of money going in there. And I've seen plenty of examples where they're not entirely sure what they're getting for their money. Uh, you know, with, with a traditional, it's one, what's one positive about some of the traditional elements is, you know, what you're getting dollar amount is pretty straightforward and pretty clear. Here's what it is. But this stuff, um, you know, there's a there's a stew in there that needs to be, you know, figured out. You mentioned outdoor uh, quite a fair bit in that in that answer to the question. You also mentioned billboards. I'd love to know why you think that billboards really resonate with people and the outdoor branding has worked so well for the company. Yeah, I mean, bill, billboards and outdoor are synonymous. It's, it gets called both terms here. Um, you know, uh, it, 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 it 
it's it, it, you can't measure it as well as you can um you, as you think you can as you try and hope you can and sometimes can on digital uh there's no doubt about that um so it, you know it is uh for us um you know we we get we get a lot of anecdotal feedback in certain places um it seems you know we think it works better in some places than others but um it's a concise message that we think um you know in the u.s that is seen by a you know a high percentage of people depending on where you put the stuff and uh i mean i will tell you um that billboards are hard to get uh there's a lot of demand there's a lot of companies that make a lot of use of of outdoor uh, because they kind of feel the same way and so it's kind of it's kind of funny you think of it as a little bit of old school but you know go try to to get a board in a place that you want in many cities in this country and you know you can get in line because it's gonna it, it very often it it will take a long time it might take it might take you five years <laughs> to get the board to get the board that you want so it's so it's kind of interesting it's an interesting thing but you know it's just one element in this whole marketing mix but you know it, it is there's there's a lot of ingredients you know to getting to to creating awareness for sure I think that's that's interesting even the mention of billboards because as someone currently living and and grew up in Australia yes we had billboards but I would argue that as someone who has never lived in the United States you would always see billboards oh as as dumb as it may sound a, a music artist may be releasing something oh the billboards would appear appear in their local city but see over here in Australia it, it didn't feel as big so I find it interesting that you mentioned that it sort of you have noticed it's done well because maybe that is also something that just works um, as well in the United States. Whereas in here, I don't know if the billboards were put up, let's say for, let's say you guys were, were based out in Australia. I, I'd be interested to see how well the billboards would be received. But see, yeah. for you guys in the United States, it seems to it seems to really be working, which is fascinating for someone who's, who's not from there. You know, and look, we think so, but it's subjective. Like a lot of things in marketing and advertising, it is subjective, and there will be plenty of people who will say, "No, I don't think it works for these other reasons," and that's fine. There, there's an endless debate when it comes to these tactics, and that's and that's marketing, isn't it? It's it's the back and forth, trying to trial and error, working out what hits, what doesn't. Can we alter yeah. that to make it work? And that's why I find it so utterly fascinating, and to be able to have the chance right. to speak with you right. um, drives the CFOs bananas <laughs> because it's uh, it takes some faith. It does. Um, you've mentioned a couple of things that you guys have been doing at the company to raise awareness, obviously the website. Have you personally in your one year faced any challenges at the company when it comes to marketing? Things that maybe put a spanner in the works or in a day-to-day -day that maybe slows you down a little more than it, you would have liked to? I'm assuming a spanner is like a wrench. Yes. <laughs> Australian terminology for you there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I'm going to use that one. Um, well, gosh, uh, I mean, things things do come up, uh, you know, all the time. I mean, yesterday, uh, just yesterday, we had a spanner. We, uh, you know, we're rolling out the website, and it's uh, it's literally uh, day by day. You kind of turn up the volume, uh, you know, in terms of what people can see and how many people are getting the new site, and we're testing. And we've, we've done most of this almost entirely in-house, so which is unusual, but it's very economical that way. And in my opinion, you will pay uh, some fancy shops to build something similar, and you will pay them 10 times what you pay to do it yourself with your own talent, uh, of which we have. Um, but it inexplicably uh, stopped yesterday, and we got 404 errors, and you couldn't get to the site. And we get on the bridge, and nobody knew what was going on. And that's the worst, because you're like, what are we going to do that we have? And because you're looking at the IT guys, like you guys always know where to look. Like we don't know where to look. So that went on for about 10 minutes and we started to get really concerned. And then it turned out uh, Microsoft had a denial of service attack yesterday, which I think is sort of widely known, but it wasn't their entire company, but it was one service of theirs that's global that we use for some of our security. And that thing had gone dark. And so we, we, we suffered from that, but it was a great relief. Um, you know, to find that, okay, we haven't like just, you know, blown this whole thing up. So, um, you know, there's, there's those kinds of things. Um, you know, I don't think we've, we've run into, uh, you know, r real, um, you know, strategic, you know, issues, you know, kind of on, on this front. I mean, we're, you know, you, you, we, we distribute only through a Um, that doesn't mean we someday we might, you, we might, 
you know, distribute elsewhere. We are on Google Flights, although that redirects back to abellaware.com. Uh, but we've certainly, you know, uh, you know, done a lot, had a lot of discussions, um, you know, with all the OTAs and GDSs and those kinds of things. Um, and so, you know, we've had to make some decisions, uh, you know, on those things. Do we want to keep the costs down, uh, but have, uh, you know, be, have less of a presence uh, in some places where people are shopping while they get to know us and, and think about who we are? Um, so, you know, we kind of go through, you know, kind of those kinds of things. Um, but, um, you know, those are, uh, you know, just, but it's, but we, we, you know, I would say, you know, we haven't had anything overly dramatic um, that says, you know, this is a big problem. And some of that, frankly, I think is because we have a genuinely, as I mentioned earlier, a, a really solid business plan that we believe in, uh, you know, that has a, a really, really good chance of working in this country. And so when, when, you know, we're not, we don't have to really fake anything. Um, you know, we're able to just really deliver with, you know, great team members, great crew members here, um, you know, a, a, you know, from, from top to bottom, you know, our, our airport staff and our, um, you know, our flight crews and all, you know, everybody really believes in this mission. The one crew meeting that Andrew holds every week, you know, really reinforces that it, it's, there's a lot of camaraderie here. So, um, so that, that helps a lot. That, that makes things a lot easier when you don't have to, you know, kind of tap dance around things. Sure. Um, Look, uh, get, certainly, uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, making sure that our ability to interact with our customers is the best experience it can be is probably number one on our list. So we have uh, a number of features and functionality that we're going to be bringing forward that we haven't been able to. The new site, it's not just about the design. More importantly, it's about, uh, you know, some of the abilities that it unlocks for us to control our own destiny. So some of our, uh, some of the API work we're doing, getting us, uh, more in control uh, will allow us to do a better job with ancillary services for customers, like as I meant, you know, cars and hotels and things like that, and some other things that are there are kind of some novel concepts that we're pretty interested in doing that we've been kind of held back, uh, uh, you know, up, up until now. So uh, you know, so those those are really important. You know, the network will continue to grow. Uh, we've got 11 airplanes on property today. You know, by mid next year, should be you know 15 or so. We'll have some you know new markets, as I mentioned. You know, the Fort Myers space that we announced today. So there's uh, there's a lot of blocking and tackling you know to do. Uh, you know, come in some of the fundamentals when we add new places. You know, when we when we open up you know Newport News. Uh, you know, we've got to get in there and do the basics and let people in, in, you know, you know, kind of central Virginia, you know, know who we are. They've never heard of us before. So it's that running that same playbook, you know, refining it as we go. Um, but, you know, making sure that we're sticking to the fundamentals, uh, you know, I think is really important. And, and all of those things um, are fundamental to us. Um, so, you know, that that that's, you know, that's a lot of, of I think, um, what you'll see from us is is just kind of you know, upping our game in, in what we, but what we, what we've learned over this, you know, 18 months or so that we've been going and, you know, continuing to, you know, get those basics and do them, do them right. Um, I think I'm going to drift a little bit off script as we're approaching sort of towards the last question. Throughout this interview, you've really mentioned the customer focus. And I find it also interesting how in your early roles, you were also doing very customer face oriented roles, like selling the tickets and so forth. And you being able to have that understanding. How important yeah. do you think when you're launching these new services, when you're marketing to understand the communities you're actually headed to and maybe what their uh, trends and what they want? Ah, that's so important. That's a really good question. Um, we, you know, we, one of the great things about being here and having it be a, a smaller place is integrating ourselves with the communities is just critical. You know, um, at U.S. Airways, you know, back in the day when it was, we would add new cities, you know, it was just impossible to get to know the cities. But, you know, that was okay because we, you know, we had a global network and we were doing our part for those cities by connecting them to Philadelphia or Charlotte. And, you know, it was up to them, you know, in their own way to, you know, kind of help that work. But, you know, we were on the, we were on Expedia, we were on the GDSs, people knew our name. So, so that was, that was fine. It wasn't really required to get in there and, and get close with the mayor and the airport director and, you know, the local chamber of commerce. But here, given what we're doing, all those things are not the case. And so, uh, you know, we do spend a lot of time, um, you know, my team, myself, other, other uh, leadership here, uh, we make it a huge priority to get to know 
uh, the people in, in the city. And, and they really appreciate that. And, and we're very supportive of each other. It's a, it's a different way of, of, of doing things uh, than, the, than, you know, than the major airlines need to do, as I mentioned. Uh, but, uh, but it's really terrific. And these, these cities uh, are, are populated with you know, amazing salt of the earth you know, kind of people who are really good at what they do. They're passionate about their cities. Oftentimes they're, they've grown up there and now they're you know, helping with economic development. And, uh, and, and it's, it's vital to, to our success uh, to be supportive and work closely with them and vice versa. It's a, it's a great synergy. So, um, but that, that, that's an interesting thing to zero in on. Uh, but we, we, we take those relationships uh, you know, really, really seriously. And we, we all make ourselves available to them. You know, they've all, I, I talk to, to, the, to people from our city every day, uh, you know, different, different leaders in, in different roles about, about everything from fine details of, you know, ticket counter signage, um, you know, up to, you know, partnerships with universities or, um, you know, supporting, you know, bigger companies in, in town with, um, you know, uh, with assistance in, in, in flight bookings and things like that. And that's so lovely to hear. I think, a company that is so focused on the people can be so important. And I would say, honestly, especially in this day and age, I mean, since we've emerged from the pandemic, we've seen the, the labor shortages, we've seen the bags going missing, we've seen probably a disconnect with a lot of companies um, here in Australia. It's been very, very much present. I'm sure if you've probably seen that disconnect has been felt, um, feeling valued as a customer and feeling valued as a member of that community and being proud of seeing say the airline and i think that's why it's so important you've mentioned people so much and really being an airline that people can be proud of and if that that can remain that can be so important in the growth the mouth spread of the, the word about the company and so forth um to end on a, a little bit of a fun note and i, I want you to not say people because i feel like you may head here what is your favorite part about the job you do as the head of marketing um I think for me personally, and it, this is a personal thing, uh, it, is, it is the variety that, is, that, that, that I, I work through every day that is informed by everything that I've done and all the people that I've met. Uh, I, I, I had dinner last night with a, with a senior guy in the industry who I've worked with in various capacities for 25 years and, and it's, it's just, it's wonderful. And so, um, I, I would say that it is, it's the, it's the variety of things that I get to do that is informed by the variety of roles that I've had, the variety of responsibilities that included all that interaction, you know, with, with, with some incredible industry leaders, uh, and what I've learned from them that, 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 that informs what I do every day. Uh, I, I think it, it, it's very satisfying to look back uh, and, and go all the way, as I mentioned earlier, and go all the way back to, um, you know, I know what it's like to clean the plane. And so, you know, I know how much time you need to turn the plane because that, that's what happens. And I know what it's like, you know, to, to have upset customers and, and, and how to deal with them. Um, but, you know, that's allowed, that's allowed me to welcome interactions with customers all the time. I'll give them my phone number. I give them my email address. And some people are surprised by that. Oh, somebody's going to, you know jump on you. I don't care. I've, I've, I've heard it all. Um, and, and, you know, almost all situations can be diffused and worked through and turned into, into positives. And I enjoy doing that. And, um, and so, um, you know, all, all of those things, you know, kind of coming together, you know, creates a, a, a very satisfying situation, uh, you know, from where I sit right now. Like you said, even just cleaning the planes, selling the tickets, um, having all those experiences, I'm sure also just helps you understand um, and understand what those people are going through in a day-to-day -day role, um, the stresses they may feel from the customers that maybe are frustrated, and and you being so open with them, I'm sure is really really beneficial, and I'm sure they really and like you said, they look at you shocked, but I, I can tell you that they probably really appreciate that. And um, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And, and I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me. It's it's been honestly a really lovely chat to learn more about marketing learn more about you your whole entire journey so thank you so much i'm really excited to uh look at the website when it comes out and see it all working up in shape and obviously how the company develops over the next year okay all right look forward to seeing you in melbourne sometime sometime, sometime soon. soon or maybe i'll, I'll see, see you up there, there. <laughs> in okay, the united states great. yeah that'd be great okay thank, thank you all right thanks all take right, care go to bed okay <laughs> bye <laughs>